Welcome to Social Media Bootcamp. Um, Lindsay and I have been working on this for couple, like a month now, month and a half. We just thought that it'd be really beneficial for everyone because social media is such a big part of real estate and the like day and age that we live in, everyone's using it. Um, no matter if it's like little kids or grandparents, it, it really ranges quite widely. Um, so we thought that it'd be a really good idea to create this for the summer, just to have something that you guys could come to and we'd teach you what we know, what we found, things that have worked out and what other people have found. So it's every Thursday throughout until August and we'll have some guest speakers. We have Willis as one. He's going to be like talking about Instagram reels and how to create those and how they'll be beneficial to you guys. Um, and then we have some other guest speakers. We have Abigail Jacqua talking, which will be really interesting because she gets all of her business from social media, which she just told me this morning. So that'll be really interesting to hear. And then we have newbies set up to come and talk to us about like his newbies list for newbies and how that's worked. So it'll be good. But today it's kind of just an intro. We're just going to be talking about different platforms and why you should use them and things like that. So I guess we can just get started. Oh, I also forgot to say how the class is going to be set up is the first 30 minutes it's going to be teaching. So Lindsay or I will be kind of talking to you guys and please ask like so many questions. Just, I just like when people participate. So that'll just make the thing go by faster and it'll be really helpful for everyone involved. Um, and then the last 30 minutes will be, we'll be practicing. We'll be applying what we've learned and just trying it out, seeing how it goes. Okay, oopsies to click it. Okay. So we live in a time where social media, we have to use it as a tool. That's why Gigi Hadid, which I'm assuming everybody knows who Gigi Hadid is. <laughs> um, and it truly For is. For those who don't know, she <laughs> is. She's, she's a model, right? Yeah, she's a model. She's an influencer. She does all of that stuff. Um, and it's tr true. Social media is a tool and should be a tool that all of you guys are using. Um, for your business, it'll really help you grow and just give everybody out there a better look at who you are, who your business is, and things like that. And just to piggyback off of that, um, I think that's such a good quote to keep in mind. Um, kind of piggybacking off of what I talked about on Tuesday's team meeting is that like everything that we're presenting are the tools for the users. Don't feel like these have to kind of take over your life. Like ultimately, like your personal brand and your reputation is what you'll support. So always keep that in the back of your mind as you are posting your social media and working on, you know, the message that you're putting out there on social media. Because um, ultimately, like everything that you put out is re representing you, your business, and your rep reputation. Yeah. That was perfect. <laughs> and I mean, like, you shouldn't be looking at social media as like a burden. Like, it shouldn't be something that's like dawning on you. Like, oh, I, I have to post on Instagram today. Or I really sh should be posting on Facebook more and getting more engagement. Like, no, you, you just need to start somewhere and grow from there. And by using it as a tool, it'll really help you. Okay, so social media marketing, kind of what is it? What are you going to be doing with it? the whole gist of the whole thing. So building your online presence is going to be really important. It's going to be kind of awkward at first because you're going to be like, I don't want to post a video. Like I don't want people looking at me and like hearing how I talk. And then you're going to watch it and think about it and be like, oh gosh, I don't like that. But it starts with just one video. You just have to post one and go from there and it'll help in some way or form. And it might take a little bit. I mean, growing your online presence and using social media for a marketing like asset is, I mean, it's kind of scary. And you guys all know, I, you've been in the business for long enough and have been hearing us talk about social media and things like that. So it is scary, but it's really going to help you increase like your target audience and your brand awareness, because there's things like the Instagram Explorer page, which you'll click on and someone's post will pop up and you'll be like, oh, I don't know who this is. Let me click on it someone will click on it and be like, oh, this is Anne. So she has, she's a real estate agent. Like, let's use her. Let's contact her. Go through things like that. So it is very important. Any questions so far? No? <laughs> well, here, um, well, okay. I'm just going to pick on Peter because I know he recently did a video and kind of going off of 
the whole idea of just getting it out there and starting. Peter, you recently did a video. Mm -hmm. Did you post that on your pages afterwards? I did not. I just posted to the um, okay. Okay. Uh, Keller because I didn't think it was ready for general consumption. Okay. I'm going to be doing that, mm -hmm. um, something like that for a broader audience. Okay. But I do post things on our Keller Williams Facebook page that are a little bit different than what I post on mm -hmm. our Cosmic Business page or my personal page. Mm -hmm. So what you said, and other people have said you should put that up because that could be a really good recruiting tool. Yeah. I, yeah. I wanted to uh, make sure that I had it tightened up a little bit. Sure. Do you plan on posting something like that to your business pages? So we're, I've got a kind of an aggressive plan for video mm -hmm. to start doing interviews with um, other people related to real estate. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then posting that um, as part of a YouTube channel. Yep. And then as part of an email campaign mm -hmm. and as part of um, social posts. Okay. So we're using that same imagery across the different okay. platforms. All right. But then just chunking them up. Yeah. A five minute video is mm -hmm. not going to work on exactly. a social post yep. or a reel or story. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Well, I think that's something too that like as we work through like these sessions every Thursday, um, we would love to kind of hear what everyone is working on as well. Um, because ultimately like we want to provide you information and insights, but then would love to hear how you're implementing some of these things too. I just am picking on Peter because I know this is a project that he's been working on for a while. Um, and so I would love to kind of just hear your progress and have you kind of share that. Like yeah. if you pop into these sessions, like kind of where you're at with that. And I honestly kind of going off of what you said, like progress and stuff. Our hope and our goal is that at the end of these classes, if you guys keep coming and stuff, like the last day we'll have a presentation and be like, okay, show us like what you learned, how you made your social media better and why you think that it's helped. So just keep that in mind moving forward. You're gonna have some work to do. <laughs> um, so the overview for today, we're pretty much just gonna be talking about social media landscape, which um, like platforms you could use and, uh, and like how they'll help you major social media platforms like I said um, and how they play a role in marketing and then the benefits of social media marketing so yes so uh, increased number of social media users worldwide I feel like this has really started to pick up within the last few years I feel like when I was growing up, granted, I was a kid, so I didn't really hear much about people saying like, oh, Instagram, Facebook, things like that. But I feel like in the past few years, honestly, since COVID, social media marketing has just created a huge boom. And especially with TikTok. We'll talk about TikTok. We'll go into TikTok. It's scary. It's confusing. But we're going to make it really easy for you guys. Um, but yeah, it's honestly been insane how much it's taken off over the years and studying social media in college, I've been able to like learn about the pro progress from like when Facebook first started versus like where it's at now and how it's really just taken off and why everyone should be using it if you have a brand and you have a business and you want to try to grow your brand and business. Okay, so I personally think the three big platforms that people use are going to be meta business, which is Instagram and Facebook. There's other ones that are connected in meta business, but the main ones in meta are Facebook and Instagram and then TikTok. So those are it's just my own personal opinion that they're the biggest ones, but I think that those are the ones that most people are using. Most agents utilize and will help you really go. Does everyone know what TikTok is? Yeah. Yes. Maybe, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you weren't nodding. Like, <laughs> well, you were nodding, so I was like, maybe, maybe not. Um, okay, so we'll go a little bit more into the differences, but preview. Facebook and Instagram are fairly similar in the ways that they're utilized. It's mostly video and photos. Most people use that like Instagram for photos and same with Facebook um, and kind of just like posting what you're thinking and things like that. On Instagram, you really won't see people just posting like a little blurb of like, this happened today, but you'll see that on Facebook. Um, and then TikTok is going to be video based. So it can range from like five second videos to 10 minute videos. So there's really a wide range that you can be posting on Facebook or on TikTok for your video length. Um, more people do the shorter end since nowadays, 
attention spans are a little bit shorter. So uh, that might differ, but you can for sure do longer or shorter. Do you have anything to add? No. I'll be honest. Do you have standard for length? I think three minutes for three TikTok minutes is, the, is max. the, no, 10 minutes is the max. I would say three minutes is a standard. Um, okay. Three minutes or lower. Sometimes you'll see people that do, are doing like 10 minute ones or up to 10 minute ones. I personally think it's when people are like telling stories or things like that. Um, but you usually see it underneath the three minute mark. Yeah. I'll be honest, I don't, I'm not on TikTok. So that's the platform I know least about. Who's on TikTok? I'm just curious. I watch TikToks. Right. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. <Not TikTok. laughs> The cool thing about TikTok, which I find most interesting, is on Instagram and Facebook, you're following who you're following, and that's pretty much what's going to be on your feed. Sometimes for Facebook, I know like you might get a blah, 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 liked this person's post, and like that will pop up. But for the most part, it's who you follow and what they're posting about. TikTok, though, they really formulate your For You page based on the things that you watch more. So let's say you spend like you watch an entire three minute video about some recipe that's being posted. But then like the next video that pops up is like a dog and you scroll right past it. TikTok takes that into account and it creates your for you page based off of that. So now they're gonna start showing you more cooking videos and more videos related to food and things like that because it's what you like. So that's kind of cool because let's say someone's looking to buy a house and they see a video of someone posting like, oh, look at this house that I'm showing in Oak Creek. Someone watches the whole video, they'll be like, oh, that's interesting. They'll start seeing more of your posts on their feed because you spent the time watching it. So it's kind of like target marketing in that sorts because they're going to be getting more of what they like. Yeah. Any questions on that? Yes. How easy or difficult I guess, is it to share TikTok videos to Facebook, Instagram, and possibly YouTube? Very easy. So when you post the TikTok, the only thing about that is though, your username will be stamped at the bottom of the video. So it'll say like the Gosney group at the bottom, which is fine. Um, but when you post a video on a TikTok, it automatically saves to your camera roll and it's gonna be in the portrait, portrait and landscape sideways. Yeah, <laughs> it'll be in portrait. Um, so it's very, very simple. Yeah. Um, as far as sharing from TikTok to others, they I heard that the algorithm doesn't like to have that TikTok sign on. So you can save your video before you post it. Oh. Yeah. Um, those side icons, if you scroll all the way to the bottom, there's a save. And you'll get the video without the TikTok symbol on there. And then you can post it to TikTok and you'll have the un watermarked yeah. video. So oh, I did not know that. that. Which, which algorithm? Yeah. The meta algorithm? Yes. Like okay. yeah. To repeat it for the those that are on Zoom, um, you can save your video prior to posting it on TikTok and it will save to your camera roll without the watermark, just in case you want to be posting it somewhere else and just don't want the TikTok watermark. Which is a very good tidbit. I like that a lot. Uh did you have something in that? The only thing I was gonna say with um because it does save your name on that, it's promoting your TikTok even more if you're posting it on all those other sites as well, because that also brings a younger crowd as a 20 year old, it brings people who are looking for their first houses back to the sites we use more. And it's watermarked on there. Yeah. And so Catch 22, it just kind of depends on if Facebook catches it and holds yeah. it back. I mean, not Facebook, it's more Instagram yeah. that will hold it back to Facebook. We can like pull up. I can always like some samples. Yeah. Oopsies. <laughs> yeah, we can use this <laughs> Next week, hopefully, we'll be in the. Yeah, so oh. this week we obviously accelerators in the other room. So if we get a bigger crowd, we can always have the over together. Back that up just a little bit. So the. Meta algorithm, 
will promote from one channel to another or on um, it will I've, for my personal experience instagram you are yeah instagram with the tiktok watermark doesn't get as much exposure if it has that tiktok watermark on it so i've saved it without the tiktok watermark facebook has been a toss-up sometimes it gets pushed out and sometimes it doesn't but you're right when people do see it they may go to tiktok and look up your tiktok name when it's on there so so if they if they see it on Meta, they may look for it on TikTok. Mm -hmm. But with that, you can also always put it in your comment section, in your caption, all that stuff, because a lot of people want to look at all the different social medias to see color pattern, all that kind of stuff. It's a very um, big thing, at least for the people I know. This HDMI cord is being funky. Huh. Okay, let's unplug it and plug it back in. Maybe. It just doesn't want to. Oh, there it goes. Oh. <laughs> Technical difficulties. Okay. Let me just make sure that I'm still sharing my screen with the Zoom. You're not. Okay. We're coming back. All right. After a brief intermission, we're back. Um, the, uh, okay. Whoa. First session, you guys. The hybrid, <laughs> hybrid training is always an interesting concept sometimes yes so thanks for being patient yeah thank you okay so first we'll talk about facebook which i feel like everyone here uses facebook am i correct on that I use facebook. No. okay good that's amazing um so facebook is the third most visited website following google and youtube which is very interesting because out of Everyone who is uses the internet, um, this is going to be the third most visited behind a search engine and then a video website. Um, and then the platform has over a billion active users, which is great for you guys. These are just some statistics also, so nothing too crazy. 59% um, of Facebook users reach out to a brand on a platform. I feel like that is huge. And it's going to be like that with most social media accounts, um, but Facebook, it is such a high percentage of users are reaching out to a brand and you guys are a brand. People are going to be wanting to reach out to you based on the things that you are posting and the things that are going to be interesting them based on what you are posting. Um, has anyone had someone reach out to them on Facebook based on their posts or things like that? Yeah. Do you get a buyer from it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> they, Keep working. They, it just happened. Oh, congrats. That's exciting. So like, I mean, it's such a great thing to know, like just from posting a photo or an open house thing on your or Facebook or Instagram, TikTok, whatever, people are going to reach out and they're going to want to know more and get to know you as an Asian. <laughs> um, lots of people think that Facebook is going to be more of a seemingly older crowd. I personally love Facebook and I would say, I mean, I'm 23 and I feel like I use Facebook like a lot. I feel like I get a lot of information from it, news from it. So don't be deterred from that. If you're thinking that, if you're thinking that it's more of like an older crowd and you want it to aim towards more like first time home buyers, things like that. Um, still post. I think it's very huge that so many people are using this app. Okay. Next, Instagram. So I think that most people around my age and up to like 30, 35, 40 use Instagram the most. It's fairly easy to use. Do all of you guys have an Instagram? Yeah? Does some, nobody not have one? I don't know, but I don't even know how to use it. <gasps> We're going to teach you. <laughs> Yay. And if you learn on nothing, we don't feel bad to say that. Like, yeah. no judgment, though. Yeah, We're not just at curious all. to get a gauge for what the group is. Mm -hmm. And Instagram is very simple to figure out. Unless you're wanting to do, like, super high-tech stuff in it, it's 
pretty simple. Um, I would say as simple as Facebook is. Um, and it's super cool because, yeah. So I only use Instagram because my Facebook automatically posts to it. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Um, so again, it's always the question, do you need a business page on Instagram for, rather than your personal one? Yeah, we'll get into business page versus personal page a little later on. But I was going to say, does everybody have a business account or is it just like a personal account? No. I like a personal one. Instagram. For like Instagram. I have I have a business one, well, for Facebook, but all of my friends on that were friends on my personal. So mm -hmm. if I posted something, they were getting it twice. So I yeah. just stopped posting everything on my business and just posted on my personal. Okay. Yeah, we'll get into that a little bit more yeah. because there's really not a right or wrong answer. There's pros and cons to both. And it's really going to be a personal preference mm -hmm. for everybody. But if anybody wants help setting up a business like meta account, we can for sure help you. And it's really interesting. I've even like changed my own personal Instagram to like a business one every once in a while because you can see so many statistics, like just like for whatever post you post, you can see how many times it's been sent, how many people it's reached, the likes, the comments, all of that kind of stuff. So it is kind of interesting if you're looking to grow your brand to be like, okay, my followers or the people on the app tend to like this type of post more than this type of post. And then you'll kind of cultivate what you're making and aim it more towards the things that people are liking versus the things that aren't getting as much engagement. Yeah. Okay. This is kind of what I was saying. Um, for like a business account, you're going to be able to get the analytics of it. So you're going to be able to tell the impressions and for video, like the reels and stuff that you're posting, you're going to be able to tell like, this video has been watched this many times, which is kind of cool to see. You can see that on TikTok. It'll tell you your TikTok views and things like that. And that's how people go viral by having all the views. Um, so it'll be kind of interesting, but it'll also show you based on your followers, like how many men versus women are like interacting with your page and things like that. So I feel like it's very important to be able to know that kind of information. That's just a personal opinion again, but it is kind of fun, kind of cool. I like seeing it to be like, oh, this many people sent this post of mine to who knows who, but it is very important. Either Ava or Lindsay have anything to say on that? Okay, guys, anyone have comments about Instagram? Where are those analytics available? So it's going to be when, are you on your business account? I think I am. So you can click, let me see. It should be. Sure. and then view insights oh, and then here you'll be able to see a whole bunch of stuff so we do have a business account set up you click on your post and then click view insights and it's going to be able to show you but if you want to get more of like the men versus women and age group one we you have to like go into settings and go through all that so it's a little bit longer of a process than just clicking insights to see which posts any questions on how to view it or and you don't want me to show you? No, you're good? Okay. <laughs> okay. And now for TikTok. And I am realizing that that is not centered, but it's okay. <laughs> um, so TikTok, like I was saying, is a video sharing site, seconds to 10 minutes. Um, 8 million people spend on average 24 hours a month on TikTok, which is insane. And I definitely fall into those 8 million people without a doubt. Um, it's addicting. So if you don't want to get addicted to TikTok, don't be scrolling on it. Just be posting on it. <laughs> set your um, uh, set your limit. Yes. Your, your time limit. <laughs> you can set your time limit. Do you, anyone yeah. know that? It's a, It'll like kick you out. Kind of a self care. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it is for sure. <laughs> yeah. I have one on my Instagram. And I swear, every night at like nine p.m., it's like, oh, you're about to reach your limit. You have fifteen or ten minutes left or something. <laughs> like, ignore. just crazy. <laughs> indication of like okay like i know i've been on it too much today anyway yeah it is very interesting to see that um so that's kind of crazy because a lot of people are spending a lot of time on it more gen z's are using tiktok than instagram which is interesting i feel like i would have expected that um 
and two thirds are going to be 18 and 19 year olds, which is starting to be in like a first time home buyer's age, kind of maybe a little bit older. Um, but the other thing that I find very interesting is a lot of people, I saw a statistic that's saying, I think it was like more than 50% of people go to Instagram or Facebook or TikTok to learn about someone. So let's say they get your business card somewhere and they're like, okay, I want to know about this person or I want to know about, for me personally, I was like more, I want to know about this brand. I'll take to social media. I'll take to TikTok, Instagram, things like that and be able to learn more about them. Um, I feel like that's might be pretty well known, maybe not, but that's how a lot of people are getting their intel and news on certain groups of people or brands, things like that. The, this day and age um especially for like brands you're building your own brand you're building up your tiktok you have it you meet this new client and on your business card it has your little tiktok handle or your instagram handle things like that they're for sure going to go to that social media account and stalk you pretty much which it's fun i definitely have stalked lots of times and you get to learn more about the person and learn more about the business that they're growing and things like that and it'll draw them in any questions on that do you know the demographic of most users of TikTok? Like their largest audience is Facebook, oh. for example. I've heard that the largest percentage of people on Facebook are between 35 and 50. So this is going to be the youngest demographic. So it's going to be 18 and 19 yeah, 18 and 19 year old range. So two thirds of 18 and 19 year olds use TikTok. That's also their largest segment of, of the population is 18 and 19. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Surprise though, there is so many viral. <laughs> Grandma. Yes, <laughs> there are. Right. Yeah, I just grabbed the statistics. It says um, 18 to 24 year olds, the largest group, constituting around 30, 36% of the adult audience. So 18 up. So if you're going to post on both or across all platforms, would you adjust your message for the audience? I think it depends on what you're posting. Um, um, so yeah, I think as long as they're seeing your face. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would agree. And if you guys like go home tonight or after this and you download TikTok, I would really recommend looking at Abigail Jacquas and Emily Walzak's. Their TikToks are like phenomenal. I think Emily Walzak is even like famous on TikTok. Like she has a lot of like thousands of followers. And she does like all these videos where she'll reach out to an agent and be like, hey, can I come take a video of the home that you're listing? They'll be like, sure. She comes in with a videographer and she's walking around the house, talking to you about the house, being like, so this is a four bedroom, three bath here in Fox Point, Wisconsin. And just talking about like the small little details about the house and things like that. And those get like so many views. And I love watching those. There's this, um, I don't remember the company that does it. It might be Vogue, but Vogue does like a get to know you with like, like famous people. And I think I've watched the Kendall Jenner one, but they're pretty much just walking around the house with Kendall Jenner and Kendall's just telling them like facts and things like that about her life, but also like her house and things like that. So it's very interesting. You get a lot of views by doing those type of videos. And even if you're doing it about like the own house that you're listing, like that will be really awesome. I think just staying consistent ultimately, like I don't feel like anyone has to like change up their entire brand for a social media platform. Um, I mean, there are going to be certain audiences that are on TikTok that are really in, engaged with like home tours and people who are in the market to actually buy or sell. But ultimately, too, like those could be younger people whose parents are maybe looking to downsize. So don't think of it necessarily as, OK, I need to like change up my content for TikTok to reach a younger generation. but. I would still stay consistent with your brand, stay consistent with like who you are, but just know that like, you know, if you just do home tours or anything like, you know, younger 18, 19 year olds still enjoy looking at nice homes and seeing what's on the market. They might not be buying anytime soon, but their parents may, their grandparents may be. So you just never know of the reach that you have with some of those audiences. Going off of what Lindsay said, I actually sent my parents a place for TikTok for them to go look at because I saw it. I thought it was cool. I thought they might like it, and they did. Yeah. We will. We share things. We forward things. It will get around if it's not hitting the right the person the buyer right away. 
um, my other thing about the changing of the or the videographer, you don't need a professional yeah. videographer. You can do it on your phone. Mm -hmm. And most iPhones, most phones in general, will take a good video. As long as your hands are not shaking, the video will look good. So you don't have to pay a videographer. I did want to put that out there. Yeah, for sure. I mean, Peter just got a new phone. <laughs> it's a pretty nice one too. It takes some pretty good videos. <laughs> All right. Okay, so impacts for businesses. So social media really has tr transformed the way businesses operate and communicate with customers and clients in your case. Um, it really is giving you unlimited access to the largest pool of potential clients and people who you could have buyer consults with or listing things with, things like that. Um, so you really just need to take advantage of it in the best way possible. Um, it's also super cost effective. Don't get me wrong, Lindsay and I absolutely love printing out marketing materials for you guys, and it's amazing. But this is also going to be a great tool to use because it's free. You're not going to have to be paying for things like that. But I'm not saying do not be printing out things because it's that's also super helpful, especially at open houses and things like that. Yeah, it's a total, totally different medium. I mean, mm -hmm. certain things are going to be for you know your open houses with your flyers. This is a whole different way to market yourself. And like Bella said, it's cost, it's the most cost effective. You don't have to pay to post anything. You are you're building up your social media presence and the content that you put out should, should be valuable so that people want to do it and follow you. And that's how you build up your brand. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> we just posted something today. Oh yay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, so uh, this is also, it is a great tool to direct um, customers to your own account, things like that. We've talked about that. And brand reputation management is going to be super fun. And we're going to talk about branding next week. So we'll have a little preview later. So increasing brand awareness. The benefits of this is if you're posting and engaging with your content, and it is engaging content, you're going to be getting more people looking at your stuff. Um, if you're just posting like a photo of something you screenshotted online, that's probably not going to get as much engagement versus if you just go into the house that you're listing, take a picture of it and then post it online. That's obviously going to get more engagement because it's real time and it's personal and it's just going to be relatable because people are going to be like, oh, I really like that. So just take that into account because brand awareness is huge. Um, target advertising. So this is, I feel like you guys are all targeting relatively the same audience you're targeting buyers and sellers <laughs> um but it definitely will depend on like the age range if you're, you're wanting like for a certain house more on the older side or more on the younger side that'll definitely differ um but the people who are going to be following you are going to be the right people and they're going to be interested in the things that you're posting um and then engagement and loyalty that's just kind of like for more of like other brands overall people are going to be more loyal to brands that they follow and that they're more engaged with. And for targeting targeted audience too, um, you know, you might have a big pool of your sellers who are um, like senior citizens or like that, that demographic. Um, and so some of your content might be more geared towards that audience. Um, and so, I would definitely just keep that in mind and make sure that you're you're curating content that fits the audience that follows you as well. Um, and really, um, really hone in on that too. Um, you know, there's other demographics too, like you know, military or like if you're that expert in that niche, like market, like really take advantage of that too. For sure. So now we're going to be talking about personal versus business. And like Lindsay said earlier, this is all about preference, what you prefer if you want to have two or if you want to have just one that's all together. Um, but the main things are going to be the goal, the audience, tone, frequency, and metrics. So we'll get into it with goal. So your personal social media account is usually more of like a self-expression account like I know on my own personal social media like I post like my friends and my dog and the food that I'm eating like things like that um 
And then if I were to have a business account, I would be posting more towards what the business is, things like that. But don't get me wrong. It is super important to have like, I know the guy that came in, I think it was like earlier this year, the social media guy. He came actually to the innovation office and he spoke. I don't remember his name though. It might've been, but he was like making it saying that, um, like it's good to be posting like yourself on your business account also so that people know like, this person's awesome, like, and put a face to a name, obviously. Um, business accounts, though, are going to be more aid to, aimed to, like, achieving your goals, such as lead gen, brand awareness, and engagement, and that sort. Cool. Um, so the audience. And, like, I was saying, if this is all personal opinion. Um, but a lot of the times, your own so social media is going to be more of, friends, family, things like that, while your brand is going to be more of potential clients, people who have already bought and sold with you, things of that sort. Um, so it kind of just varies. And don't get me wrong, you can obviously post your own personal stuff on your own business stuff. But if you are wanting to and interested in making like two separate accounts, like your own personal versus my brand that I'm creating here, then we can help you with that. And we'd love to help you with that. And that's what this is all about. Um, oh, and I kind of went off. The, wait, no, I talked about audience. <laughs> Tone. So this one I feel like is kind of obvious. I feel like your own personal account is going to be more relaxed, laid back, things like that. And then on your own business account, it's going to be more like, this is what I'm telling you about this house. Like, you're not going to be posting something like super like wordy and things like that or high level words on your own personal usually just because not everyone's going to be able to understand what you're saying um so it'll definitely vary based on what account you're posting on and your brand identity but any questions no cool. curious who um who keeps things separate in terms of a business page for a personal yeah, I have both. I don't use the, on Facebook and Instagram, I have both. Um, but my Facebook business page doesn't do much. Okay. Um, just because it's harder to get the followers on the business side mm -hmm. of it. Um, and everybody's already connected to my personal page. Mm -hmm. Instagram is a little easier um, to get the following. Mm -hmm. So I find myself using the business. And it's not like, they're just like both public kind of. Yeah. Like they're set up public. Um, but yeah. It, it's easier for Facebook in particular just to have the one. Yeah. I do have the business page that I send my strangers to. They don't okay. know me. Okay. Because kind of have to know my personality to understand my personal page. Yeah. So then once they get to know me, then move over to my personal page. Sure. But okay. I'll send strangers to my business page. Okay. All right. Anyone you, else? You run Facebook ads from the business. Yes. So with Facebook um, and Instagram too, like you have to have a business page in order to run an ad campaign. So that is one benefit to having that business account. And like Bella said too, you get the analytics. So if you feel like those two are, you know, kind of at the top of your list in terms of the pros to a business page, then for <laughs> sure switch to a business page or create that business page in order to be able to do those things and see those analytics. Um, but I know some agents who are very much like, nope, I have a huge following on my personal page. I'm, I'm keeping with that. I'm not going to, you know, mix things up and like make it more complicated for myself and have two separate pages. So it's really kind of thinking through like your day to day, how you want to go about posting things and utilizing those accounts. Um, but like I said earlier, there's not a right or wrong answer. It's really just, okay, what's going to work best for you, your day to day, your systems, like, you know, what does that look like? And another thing to note is for Instagram, I think you can do this on Facebook too, but I know like a hundred percent on Instagram. If you are like wanting to like, okay, I'm going to try out a business page. I'm just going to give it a shot, but I want my followers to be like drawn to that business page and know about it. When you're posting on your own personal Instagram, 
you can tag mm -hmm. your other account. You can like collaborate with them, um, which is super cool. And like, if you post something on your business account, you can collaborate with your personal account and it'll show up in the top. Like Ann Kleber Realty is collaborating with Ann Kleber, like your own personal versus your business page. So that's another way to really draw people into a business page versus Instagram. Yeah. So I don't have a business page, but I use the, the groups page. Yeah. And that will take my personal Instagram account. Will my followers see mm -hmm. the, okay. So, so it, they'll see that I was taking something. And yeah. Okay. It'll come up as like, it'll come personal. up on your own. So let's say you get taken something from the groups page. You'll get a notification for on your Instagram being like, Gosman Group has asked to collaborate with you. And then you click confirm and it the post will show up on your own feed and it'll show up on the Gosman Group. Yeah, so don't need to sh share it. Mm -mm. No, it'll already come up and it'll say at the top and then people will be able to click on your account or the group's account, things like that, which is kind of cool. I can show you guys how to do that too. It's really simple. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's super easy. And I know like when we, when was it? I think it was just recent. Last week, Friday, when the vibe check came out, um, we had Cream City tagged in it because one of the Cream City guys was in the video. So, and then it shows up on theirs versus ours too. Okay, frequency, which is really fun. And we're gonna talk about it in one of the classes, but scheduling posts. Has anyone here scheduled posts? Yeah, one, two, cool. It's a little confusing at first, but once you get the hang of it, it's like super, super simple. I do it for all the birthday posts for all you lovely people. Um, I schedule them like at the beginning of the month so that I don't get anything mixed up, but you can go through and schedule, especially in meta business, you can schedule for Facebook and Instagram. Um, and it's really fun because you can do it the month before and schedule all your posts for the next month so that you don't have to worry about like, okay, at this date, at this time, I need to be posting this photo. And we'll also talk about later, like when's like prime posting time and when are the most people active on each app and things like that. So then you can really focus in on, okay, this post needs to be going out at this time. We can also create content calendars, which are kind of cool. For a lot of my internships I've had in the past, I've created content calendars for them. And it kind of just gives you like a baseline of, okay, I know for next Wednesday, I need to have a photo of a new listing or a photo of a potential property that could be going on the market soon. Um, things like that. So then you can look in there and be like, plan out your week and be like, okay, I need to get all this done by this day. So it's pretty simple, pretty fun. And you can make your content calendars cute also, which is really cool. So Things like that. Does anyone have questions about content calendars or scheduling? We'll get into it later. And you can literally do it all through Meta Business Suite, which is just like a URL um, website. So we'll get into that. And metrics. So like I was saying before, you can go through your or on your own personal account if you don't have a business account or thing like you can switch your personal to a business account um just by literally clicking a button but you will be able to tell likes comments things like that um and you obviously can see your own followers and things of that sort but the engagement rate and conversation rate things like that I keep saying things like that <laughs> um you'll be able to really see that based in like the statistics and stuff through a business account so if anyone is curious and wanting to see those statistics I can help you switch your own personal Instagram you already have to a business you just flip a switch so it is very very simple and going back to you know personal versus business and content calendars and scheduling posts um, in command, there is a feature in order to do that as well, um, where you can schedule out posts um, months, weeks in advance, um, but it does have to be a business account in order to connect it with the command and to be able to do that. So just keep that in mind, um, since it is completely free to do that and schedule those posts out, if you do need a platform to do that. Um, but like Bella said, we'll go through and 
kind of talk more details in terms of how do you create a content calendar and provide we'll provide some examples of that too so that you guys can all kind of take that away to um when you leave that class and have that created it'll be fun <laughs> okay so for next week we are going to be creating your brand if you have one created already, that's amazing. And if you have things about it that you wanna tweak, that's even better, we'll help you with it. Um, so your brand really is the way that you are being perceived through your social media, through your business card, through the things that you're putting out there. Um, it's really about colors, fonts, what you're posting, the layout of things, and how it kind of all meshes together. Consistency. Consistency. See, we love it. So we hear that this all the time, you guys. <laughs> With anything, consistency is key. Mm -hmm. We're gonna say that like fifty thousand times this summer. Yeah, and it truly does make like all the difference, just from like a visual point. I mean, like it, it's just gonna look amazing. <laughs> it's brand recognition. Yeah. So, um, you know, you guys have probably heard me talk about this, but. Um, the reason that direct mail will work for you is if you send it out every single month and that it looks the same with your same headshot and your same colors and branding. Um, you know, someone may pick up a, a postcard and look at it one month, throw it away. But if you do that every single month, like they're going to start, it's going to start to click for them. Oh, it's this realtor again. Oh, here's that realtor again. But the moment that they need to buy or sell or that they know somebody who needs to buy or sell, they can say, oh, who's that realtor who's sent me that postcard every single month? So the next time that they do get that postcard in the mail, they're going to say, okay, I'm going to keep this. I'm going to give this agent's number to my friend who is actually looking for a realtor right now. Um, so that's just one case. I know that's not social media related. Um, but it's the same thing with social media. So if someone is scrolling through and they're seeing your ad, they're seeing your page, um, it's just that brand recognition so that they know that you are a realtor. This is how I can contact you if I do need anything. If I need a, um, a plumber, if I need a contractor of some sort, they know they can reach out to you. Yeah. Um, just a little shout out to Jessica Hanawi. If you guys look at her Instagram, it is so consistent. The colors, the fonts, the way it's set up, the things she's posting. So if you need an idea or kind of just a little inspiration, definitely check out her Instagram because it is very consistent and very visually appealing. Um, yes, check her out. Jessica. Yeah, she's out of the innovation office. Yeah, <laughs> I can pull it up a little bit yeah. so I can spell it. Um, H-I-N-N-A-W-I. There you go. Beautiful. Um, so yeah, check out hers. It's super consistent and the colors and everything. So just a little. She's yeah. homes.5.jessica. There you go. So does anybody want to talk about their branding that they already have? <laughs> <laughs> if anybody has one no we have so go ahead no, 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 no. we have a brand logo mm -hmm. that i just drew on the back of a young and it was okay when i was a solo agent now i have a team of younger adults and they're like it looks like an insurance company so well this is what we do okay boomer so I mean, <laughs> we're, we're embarking on redoing it with different colors Different yeah. imagery. I paid no attention to the font and mm -hmm. just you know picked something that looked good out of the drop down menu. So it's really undirected and just kind of ad hoc, just kind of thrown together. So we're we are right now going to be doing this. Perfect. It'll be fun. Next week we're going to do all of that. We can create different logos if anyone's interested in starting something on that sort of route. Um, I know FRG actually they just kind of like mini rebranded I would say oh, they got like they completely rebranded completely okay I wasn't 100 percent sure I just know they did because the logo like looks so different and it's like beautiful definitely check out their new logo and things like that yeah they're a really um, great example if you guys do want to like look up some of these agents um 
and just kind of get an idea for the, like really just the possibilities. Don't feel like you have to like have like this huge rebrand and like have everything created and like have to love it right now. Like this might take a while too. Um, you know, I, I hear of a lot of agents who want to create a logo and have all this and they kind of decide in like a couple days. Well, you kind of have to sleep on some of that stuff and make sure that like you like get a week from now, even a month from now. You don't want to be sick and tired of seeing your brand. You want to look at it. You want to love it. And you want your clients to love it. You want your followers to love it too. Um, and so it's not something that, you know, is going to get created overnight, but like we're here to help provide the tools and to help you um, with the direction to, to take this as well. Um, so kind of like homework from today is that Bill and I really want you guys to start thinking about your brand. Think about your audience and think about, okay, what, what catches your eye? Like what colors do you like? What fonts do you like? And just kind of get that general idea um, and start write that down, put that in a Google Doc or something, just so you have a starting point. And then next week, we're really gonna focus on, okay, brand creation and what does that look like? So we can help you formulate, um, start to formu formulate that, um, ask, ask the right questions um, and to help you really get started with it. Yeah, and that makes it super fun. Another thing um, that for like your brand creation is we will be working on Canva. We, Lindsay and Ava and I work on Canva every single day. So we've got it down. Lindsay's like the master. Um, so we'll be helping you with that. And in Canva, there is a spot for your brand. Yeah. So that in that little spot, you can literally click on it and it'll have your color scheme your fonts that you use, your logo, things. So it makes it like super simple when you are going to create a post. You can just click on your brand and drag everything and it'll all be right there. Yep. So many hands. Ava. I was just going to make a point about the color scheme. You guys can look at your headshots because we do pull a lot of colors for the Canva stuff off of headshot colors and it looks better overall, in, at least in my opinion. Um, and that kind of helps because it draws your eyes not only to the picture of you, but also everything around. And a little plug for our free headshot day, June 12th um, in Oak Creek. Uh, so if that is something that you guys, you know, need to get a new updated headshot, um, we're really excited for this event. Um, you know, we, we really wanted it to be more of like a lifestyle shoot too, not just your standard headshot. Um, so that's going to be taking place next month. Um, so come get a free headshot. We're going to be releasing the sign up next week. So stay tuned for that. Um, and you'll also get some marketing materials for that as well. So we really want to help you, um, you know, give you the tools right away in order for you to start creating your brand. Yeah. As we're doing this, uh, I, I did, when I did our logo, <laughs> and I suggested how our logo should look. So I did actually use a design, but we used this kind of way of colors. Mm -hmm. So we have just free reign with any color that we want to use and then but then are there requirements for how we represent Keller Williams on like yard signs or open house signs? Are there GMAR or DSPS or MLS requirements for the size and position of Keller Williams versus our brand that we should be aware of? Yes. So um, I mean, you have to have that broker's affiliation on all of your marketing materials specifically with yard signs, um, that's going to be the asset that we have a little bit more requirement for and guideline to in terms of the K to B logo. The K to B logo has to take up 20% of the yard sign. Um, Ooh, so nobody's yeah. <laughs> that's the first time I've ever heard it. Yeah. So that's why you see kind of a consistent like yard sign with that K to B logo at the bottom. Um, but we really do still want your logo at the top of the sign. That's kind of how we always design those signs for our agents. And then you see the KW logo at the bottom. Um, but that is really important because if someone is driving by and someone doesn't see the KW logo, then they might say, oh, you're not representing the brokerage and you could get fined. So we want to protect you guys. And also, you know, it's think about it as in the consumer's eyes too. If you drive by and you don't, can't recognize the name or the number or whatever, but they see Keller Williams and they call a Keller Williams office and they're like, I drove by this listing. It was on, I don't know, North Avenue. Um, but I saw Keller Williams, like, who is this listed? 
we're going to find you. We're going to direct that consumer to your cell phone number because it's your listing. So you got to think of it in terms of that is that we, we want to make sure that the consumer gets to you. Um, and so that's really helpful with having that brokerage affiliation in there. Obviously, it's for WRA roles. Um, but that's really the main kind of marketing asset that we have that requirement for the size of the logo. Um, the 25th page, mm -hmm. which is, I have it on you. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it is give or take. Okay. It, you know what I mean? I'm not going to miss it. Doesn't necessarily have to be the black and red. Oh, no. correct. No, it does not have to be the black or red. Um, I know like some new agents though too, is like when you're first getting started, you can kind of lean on that, um, that Keller Williams brand. And I kind of recommend that for new agents too, is because when you're just starting out and nobody knows your name as a real estate agent, you're leaning on that Keller Williams brand. Keller Williams has a great re reputation in Milwaukee. Um, so you're kind of leaning on that first. And then once you start building up that business and you really have a, a name for yourself, then it's like, okay, now I'm going to really create my own brand. I learned a few things like, then that's kind of what I recommend for new agents. You know, you guys have been in the business, what, five years now? Not quite. Not quite. It'll be five years in March. Thank you. <laughs> I other places. <laughs> um, but no, I think this is a great time for you guys to really branch out and kind of recognize like, okay, where do you want to take this? Like, next level. Um, but no, you do not have to use the cadence that um, short and sweet answer. So there are design um, uh, instructions or, um, you know, there are there are rules yes. with the KW logo. Yeah. So if you don't use red, are we using the white or the black? Yep, either one. Okay, yep. but those are the ones. Like we couldn't use orange. No. Okay. You cannot, so, there's okay, no so you way that we have anything. access to yeah, changing yeah, 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 yeah. the color of the KW yeah. logo. So I just wanted but, to make that clear. But if you wanted it your own orange logo, you still have to have that KW logo. Right. There. So but you would you'd probably want to use the white or the black. Yeah, okay. Yellow. So I just wanted to make that orange and then the, the red potato. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I just saw the orange up there. So yeah, that's, sure. Because, yeah, I did the yeah. red because it was easy to do all the red with KW, yeah. but yeah. I might be ready to do something mm -hmm. different. Yep. But my logo is red. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it'll be fun. We'll do it next week. We can you know, test things out, try things out. The hardest part for me was on. Yeah. It's the hardest hard. Well, I just saw on these videos and just sent them to Lindsay about it's a video talking about different Canva fonts and like the fonts that look like luxury and things like that. So I can bring those videos in next week and we can play them up here so you guys can watch them and see if any of the fonts are catching your eyes. Mm -hmm. Um because they are nice and it is hard to find fonts and like which you can ones scroll like forever. Like yeah, hours. 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 Like, oh, yeah, you definitely want to make sure that, you know, if you are designing a logo and you use a really skinny font, think about your yard sign. Mm -hmm. That's the, that's the one marketing asset where you need to, like, that's what I always kind of like, yeah, it looks good on social media. It looks good on a business card, but does it look good on a yard sign? That's the most, that's the key. Um, because you could be driving by and you have your logo and it's super thin and like dainty. And then it's like, I cannot read that. But it's like, even like driving five miles an hour, like you can read it. Mm -hmm. um, ultimately, like that's the question you have to ask when you're finalizing. We'll talk all about that next week. Yeah. So thank you guys for joining us. Thank, thank you. you.